One day, while visiting the Valentine Saloon, we meet a man named Theodore Levin, an author writing a book about Jim Boy Calloway, a legendary gunslinger from the height of the Wild West, who is said to be the fastest left-hand draw that ever drew breath. Come on, sir, try to remember. What really happened at Sylvia's Saloon back in 76? Just a lot of bunk, Plato. It's just a lot of bunk. It's not bunk, Mr. Calloway, sir. It's history. Ancient history, done and dusted. The dead got off lucky, the living got to keep suffering. Same as always. But did you shoot the Newton twins? I don't give a pig's penis about the Newton twins. One of them was a girl, anyhow. But you had been friends back in 73. You rode the Alabaster Trail together. Funny thing about pigs' penises. They're curly, like their tails. <laughs> Put that in your fucking book, Plato. <sighs> this isn't going very well. Apparently not. This is Jim Boy Calloway. The Jim Boy Calloway. Who? The gunslinger. Fastest left-handed draw that ever drew breath. He once killed 14 men in a fight at Lucy Hollow. What are you waiting for? How do you mean? Well, I reckon right now, kill him yourself. I don't want to kill him. I want to deify him. He's a god. I'm trying to write his biography. Well, how's that going? I think I prefer the duel. Either I'd kill him and be able to be Baltimore's finest ever gunslinger, or he'd kill me and I could be set free from ever having to speak to him again. Well, you're starting to understand something very important. What's that? The joys of gunslinging. It's win-win. Freedom or glory. That's brilliant. I'm gonna write that down, if I may. Be my guest. <laughs> What's your name? I don't have a name. But you are a gunslinger. Not really. I mean, folks who need shooting, I try and shoot in the back. All that other stuff, it's, well, bunk. But you fought duels. Once upon a time, I may have. And you ain't interested in fame. <sighs> I don't think so. Strange. But you like fortune. I need money, sure. OK, then forgive me, mister, if I seem a little desperate. I am a little desperate. This book, I've got to make a thing of it, and, well, there's a whole list of gunfighters, legends, every last one. Emmett Granger, Flacco Hernandez, Billy Midnight, Black Bell. Never heard of them. Maybe you can go and speak to them. Ask them about Callaway. Any of them get uppity, shoot them. I can't believe I just said that, but... You want me to go and find some... Sad, deluded fools like him. Ask if he was the greatest, and then if they get uppity, shoot him. Does sound a lot worse than it did in my head. How much you paying? Well, a lot. Half the proceeds of the book, if you help me get it written. I'll see what I can do. Ha! Oh, get photos. Okay. And there are notes on the back of those portraits that should lead you to him. I'll see what I can find out. I imagine we'll be stuck here upon your return. Here are some other flop house. That man might be the answer to our problems. Well, my problems. Your problems? See if a good sleep can fix those. Ah, hello. Have you come back for another look at the great man? Something like that. It is something to behold. A proud lion in his twilight. Mm-hmm. This all seems... I don't know. You sure you know what you're asking for? I know I won't get anything out of this one. Or anything coherent, at least. Find out what you can, or, or generate some interest in great gunslingers of your... That's the best idea I've got. All right. At least you're paying. How do I find these guys again? Oh, guys and girl, your gunslingers? Look at those portraits I gave you. I made notes on the backs. I was gonna look them up myself, but... Uh, but you're a better man for the job. Is that right? Okay, then. After speaking to Theodore, he hands us four photographs of legendary gunslingers, and tasks us with finding them, questioning them about Callaway, and to kill them if we have to. Inspecting the photos Theodore gave us, we see Black Bell standing over a deer. Turning the photo around, we learn her name is Maybelle Elizabeth Coulter, the Grande Dame of the Gunslingers, and the Dynamite Dowager. 
She was married six times to six gentlemen. Gamblers, robbers, outlaws, everyone. Never divorced and dresses in her widow's weeds. She is the sole remaining survivor of the Colter Tobin gang. Outlawed after a robbery in Rhodes. Private contract for life or liberty. Large reward. Last reported sighting near Blue Water Marsh. Do not approach. The next photograph shows Billy Midnight holding two revolvers. Turning it around, we learn his name is Wilhelm Schnell, best known for killing Rabbit Matthews. Little is known about Midnight before the killing of Rabbit Matthews, but he's thought to have been Matthews' rifle cleaner and stable boy. He was an overnight sensation and gained national celebrity, speaking tours and reenactments from St. Louis to San Denis. He received death threats and suffered attempts on his life, and is now a recluse who makes regular visits to the Rhodes train station to drink in the bar car. The next photo is of a Mexican named Flaco Hernandez, the terror of the Grizzlies, wanted in eight states and running with a gang of at least ten. They make raids into Annisburg, Valentine, Strawberry, and Surrounds. His hideout is west of Coulter, deep in the Grizzly Mountains. And the final photo we received from Theodore is of Emmett Granger, pervert, killer, hog fancier. 1882 Beaverbrook Massacre, reported sightings. 1886 Laidlaw Family Disappearance, rumors of involvement. 1890 The Chaparral Killings, suspect. 1894 Fosse Gang Arrest, witness. 1894 Federal Pardon, why? At present, keeper of hogs near Flatiron Lake. After inspecting each of the photos, we now have the locations of the gunslingers' last known locations on our map, and we can now track them down for questioning about Jim Boy Calloway. Making our way up into the Grizzlies, we come across a group of Del Lobos gang members around a cabin on a frozen lake. Walking up to the gang members, they warn us to turn back, and from here we have the option to threaten them or to defuse the situation. If we defuse the situation, they will allow us to walk over to the cabin. But where's the fun in that? Hey, who's that? You in the wrong camp, Avenger. I don't mean no harm, okay? Just want to speak to Hernandez. We don't take two visitors up here. Hey, who's that? You in the wrong camp, stranger. Pulling out our gun, we kill all of Flacco's men, and can now approach the cabin. Flacco Hernandez, you in there? I didn't want trouble, but I'm just here to speak with you. About Boy Calloway? Pull your weapons away, and I'll come out! Flacco agrees to come out as long as we holster our weapons. Putting our guns away, Flacco exits the cabin. I'm unarmed. Well, I just want to talk. My boy Callaway? Sure. Here's your message. After dueling Flacco, we take a photo of him for Theodore. That completes Flacco Hernandez, and now we can go off to find the rest of the gunslingers. But before doing that, we can pick up Flacco's revolver, a unique variant of the Cattleman revolver, with a one-of-a-kind engraving and carving. This location is not exclusive to this mission, and you can come and go as you please. But while we're here, we might as well look around. Inside the cabin, we find a lockbox with a map, rifle cartridges, and ginseng elixir inside. On a table, we can loot a bottle of Kentucky bourbon and a pack of premium cigarettes with a cigarette card inside. And finally, inside of another tent, we can open up another locked box, this one containing a small amount of ammo. In a cabin on Flatiron Lake, we find legendary gunslinger Emmett Granger standing outside of his hog pen. Hey, you. What do you want? Howdy. You Granger? That's my name. And my occupation, too, if you hadn't noticed. Weren't always like that, though, were you? Used to be a quick draw guy. You knew Jim Boy Calloway? Used to be is correct. Then there's a long over. And who might you be? Don't matter. I need you to tell me about Jim Boy. Just a quote for a book. A book about Jim Boy? <laughs> well, shit. I can't talk to you now. Look at me. A knee deep in hog crap. Well, don't mind me. We can talk while you work. <laughs> I ain't talking. 
and shoveling. Besides, a young man like you would get it done at half the time. I don't know about that. What's to know? You interested in the old days? If you shovel this shit, I tell you some stories. You keep your hands clean, I don't give you squat. God damn it. These better be some stories. Promising to tell us stories in exchange for some work, Arthur enters the pen and starts shoveling the manure. Stop wasting my time. All right. I'll shovel your damn shit. Jim boy weren't nothing, you know. Me? I killed men, women, and children, too. Animals. I even killed rocks. And I killed them good. I shot folks, stabbed folks, skinned folks. I scalped some. Boy, they scream when you scalp them. Hey, let me work. Don't know what's got into these hogs, but I know what's coming out of them. <laughs> I bashed folks, butchered folks. I burned folks alive. Buried folks alive. One time, I... Hey, I get it, all right? You're mean. What about Callaway? You have no idea, girl. If I a feminine type like you, I'd probably have chopped your head off, stuffed you, and eaten you like a sausage. No doubt. Get your back into it, boy. You ain't done. Now it's clean enough to eat off. Uh, I guess I'm done. Get that barrel to the shit pile, and I suppose you is. All right. No shortage of shit round here. Comes from hungry hogs and no hands. Uh, uh, hell, uh, that stinks. <laughs> okay, I cleaned up your mask. Go on, tell me about Callaway. I said I'd tell you stories. I didn't say they'd be about him. Don't trifle with me, old man. You knew him. Just give me something, anything. You're making a book, you should make it about me. They're just words, is all. Give me something to say and I'll leave you alone. You owe me there. Hey, you be careful. <sighs> Killer like me, it don't take much to end up on the end of my knife. One hey, time... you know I... what? I don't think you were anything at all. Just a crazy old man. I ain't a killer? Well, you'd already be hog feed. I hadn't made a deal with the Federals got this far. This is your last chance, Mr. Granger. Give me a quote from the book! Hey, hey, hey you don't, you don't hit no man of peace, no government witness. <laughs> Callaway said you was full of piss, but he didn't tell me the half of it. I'm itching to drop you, girlie. Only you ain't worth my time. I, I got too much to lose. Too much to lose? Well, seeing as I cleaned up this pig's die, I figure I'm in my rights to wreck it. Let's see. You don't want to do that? You walk away right now. Well, well. All I wanted was a quote. You don't know who you're trifling with. Granger, mad that the book isn't about him, decides to go back on his words and doesn't tell Arthur anything about Calloway. Picking up some dynamite off a nearby table, Arthur throws it into the manure piles and makes a mess of the farm. No. No. You did not. Oh, no. Took yourself a regular shit shower, Mr. Granger. Boy, that's real nasty. You earned yourself a killing. And I'm gonna enjoy it now. Draw. It's gonna be the last thing you do. Granger is quickly taken care of. And after taking a photo, that completes Emmett Granger. And now, we can go after the remaining gunslingers. But before doing so, we can pick up Emmett's revolver, another unique variant of the Cattleman revolver. Emmett's revolver has a short barrel and a one-of-a-kind engraving, with a unique carving of a pig on the handle. And while we're here, we should also run inside and grab the harmonica on the shelf near the door. This can be used later for Sadie Adler's item request. Going to Black Bell's last known location, we find an old run-down shack on stilts. Walking up to the door, we get greeted by Black Bell pointing her Lancaster repeater at Arthur. You there. Oh, hello? You a bounty hunter? Well, not right now, I ain't. You Black Bell? I'd like to talk to you about your Wild West days. I don't care much for reminiscing. 
You got any friends as bounty hunters? None that spring to mind. Well, then you done led them boys here, and you none the wiser. Ah, those bounty hunters. Knew my luck had run out sooner or sooner. Well, get inside. I'll tell them you're gone. Oh, no, no. I ain't hiding from them scalp hunters. I'm not running from them neither. And fighting? Yeah, if it's just me against them, <laughs> that'd be a waste of time and nitroglycerin. Well, let me know what I can do. You want that Wild West story, don't you? Yes, I do. All right. Get up here quick. Now, when I give you the word, hit that. Whole place is wired. Black Bell, I got a contract here for your life or your liberty. We'd sooner it be liberty. That's mighty reasonable, mister. Come here, let me take a look at it. Come on. Oh, come on. Stop just there. No. Them scalp hunters off your back. Not for now. For now. So, you gonna tell me about your Wild West days running with Jim Boy Calloway? Little Boy Calloway? <laughs> the only running he did was away from a fight. And that's about the end of it. Well, a man's apparently a famous gunslinger. Yeah, so they say. But uh, don't get what's famous confused with what's true. The ones of us that lived that life, we was too busy being scared for our scalp to talk to no newspaper writers or dime novel men. Well, what were they like then? Those days they all talk about. <sighs> Same as now, I guess. Only longer ago. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna need your picture, too, if it ain't a trouble. No, sir, no trouble at all. Can't be worse than those awful drawings on the wanted posters. <laughs> oh, great. Well, you stand over there and oh, let me get this thing ready. Uh, ready? How do you want me? Like this? Referring to Jim Boy as Little Boy Calloway, Black Bell tells Arthur the only running he's done is away from fights. Since this is the only information we've gotten so far about Calloway, we have no reason not to believe it. How about this then? Okay, I got it. And I guess I'll be on my way. Here. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Bell. You gonna be all right? Oh, been running for 20 years. Suppose I'll be running till I drop. Just the way it is. Yep. Good luck. <laughs> After taking a photograph of Black Bill, she rides off, never to be seen again. And that completes Black Bill. Unlike the other three gunslingers, Bell is the only one to not give us a weapon. But that doesn't mean there's nothing worth collecting here. Running inside a shack, we can find quite a bit of loot. 
and a cigarette card. This one being famous gunslinger's card number 10, Emmett Granger. Heading to the Rhodes train station, we can question the station clerk Alden about Billy Midnight. Hey, you there. A quick word. What can I do for you, sir? There's an old gunslinger I'm looking for. I heard he comes through here. Name of Midnight? Billy? Oh, that old soak? Yeah, he spends days on board these trains, but he's going nowhere but the gutter. I imagine you'll find him riding the next one through here. Either that or the next one. Try them both. Look in the bar car. Entering the train's bar car, we find Billy Midnight having a drink. Mr. Midnight? Excuse me, I'm trying to drink. Mr. Midnight, listen, this won't take a moment. I just want to talk with you about your old days as a shootist. Get away from me! Hey! I didn't shoot him in his sleep! No one's I saying I didn't shoot him in his sleep, and if I did, it was the only way! Not a problem. I'm here about Jim Boy Calloway, and no one shot him yet. I knew you'd come for me! Get away from me! Mr. Midnight! Trying to question Midnight about Calloway, Midnight tells us that he did not shoot someone in their sleep, and that if he did, it was the only way. This could possibly mean that the Rabbit Matthews killing Midnight is best known for was just Midnight killing a defenseless man in his sleep. I knew you'd come for me! It were my fault! I knew! Now you don't know nothing, Mr. Midnight! I wanna talk! Something foolish. You come for me. Come on. Taking a photo of Midnight, that completes Billy Midnight. But before we go, we can pick up Midnight's pistol, a unique variant of the Mauser pistol. This mission is an easy way to get this weapon early on. After dealing with the four legendary gunslingers, we head back to the Valentine Saloon to report back to Theodore. Hey, I'm looking for some fellas sojourned around here. Boy Calloway and a rider called Levin. Drunk Boy Calloway. This bar's got bullet marks to remember him by. Last I heard, they was in Saint Denis. Had rooms on a riverboat there. Saint Denis? On a riverboat? Oh, okay then. The bartender tells us Drunk Boy Calloway is in Saint Denis, staying on a riverboat. Heading to the Grand Corrigan Riverboat, a guard escorts us to meet with Calloway. Hey, I'm looking for boy Calloway and a man writing a book about him. This the riverboat they're staying on? Yes, sir, they're here. Around this time, Mr. Calloway usually enjoying a drink on the observation deck. You can follow me. If you're quick, you might catch him sober. Oh! My friend with no name! You found us! Sure. How did you get on? About how you'd expect. Well, any good anecdotes? Anecdotes? From the old days. Well, to be honest, things went a little differently. Uh, I did shoot a lot of people. I, I thought that's sort of what you wanted. Well, I'd, uh... <clears throat> yes, that'll be fine. Do you think anyone noticed it was you? Noticed? I think the people I shot noticed. <laughs> I mean... Do you think anyone would mind if I, if we, said he'd done it? Boy Calloway. Sure, I don't care. Just as long as... I... Share the money? Of course I will. <laughs> Literature is a filthy business, but sometimes it pays well. Especially when you lie. Great. That's a goddamn fest! What the hell's going on here? Uh, nothing. Who's this grass snake? Uh, you know, I don't know. Have you been being me? I'm nobody, buddy. But I'm somebody! <laughs> and I can't have any nobody being this somebody, you goddamn... Get, I don't know what the goddamn you are, but trust me, it ain't nothing I want to be, so you can't be me! What a way with words. Uh, damn you, Theodore Levin! You're a snake! Damn you! Hey, damn you, nobody! Hey, I'm already damned! Oh, uh, but I can't take credit for that, which I... Damn says I didn't, I... I'm an old man. Just never happened to Achilles, to Gawain, to Caesar. You can't happen to me. I'm gonna kill both of you. Calm down. 
I'm a legend! Yes, you are. <sighs> all right, all right, well, let's prove it one more time. I don't have to prove nothing to you, nobody. No, of course you don't, but maybe you need to prove something to you. <laughs> you got quite a way with the words. Eh? Yeah. Maybe uh, you should write my book and we should kill Plato here! No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's not. Now, come on. Who shall we kill? I mean, you kill, I mean. Ah, damn. I slayed my dragons years ago. I'm a tired old man. Ah, uh, now, you're drunk and you're bored yeah. and you're a mess. Well, I always hated Slim Grant. Oh, he killed my cousin. But that was years ago. Well, where's Slim Grant? Who's Slim Grant? This is him. An old friend of Mr. Calloway's. He ain't no friend of mine. He's state marshal now, out of Annisburg. State marshal? Make a damn cousin killer state marshal, do they? All right, I'll go get him. Great. We'll wait for you at Brandywine Drop. All right, just sober up and start practicing. Otherwise, this won't be a book. It'll be a memorial. Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> you know what? I kind of like that fella. After a meeting with Calloway, we are now tasked with locating and capturing Slim Grant the man who killed Calloway's cousin Jed in 1882, and who is now State Marshal. Heading to Annisburg, we are told by a deputy that Grant had headed up to Beaver Hollow looking for some outlaws, and has been gone for a couple of days now. You, I'm looking for Slim Grant, State Marshal. Heard you boys know where to find him. Oh, Mr. Marshal was here last week. I think he headed up to Beaver Hollow looking for some outlaws. Is he coming back? Sure, when he... Catches them fellers he's been after. Well, how long's he been gone? Well, a couple of days. Well, you ain't gonna go look for him? If your boss's boss, who you all hated, went missing, possibly dead, at the hands of a bunch of violent wanted men, would you go looking for him? Well, yeah, probably, because I'm a fool. Well, when he's dead, Maybe I'll become Marshal. I'll be a hero riding a horse from town to town, mister. Think of that. Good luck with those dreams. <laughs> Making our way to Beaver Hollow and disposing of some outlaws, we find Slim Grant tied to a tree. Hey, hey! Okay, let's get you out of here. Yes, indeed, son. Uh, uh. I need a favor, Mr. Grant. It's nothing big. I'll explain on the way. You might as well relax. This is real peculiar. I'm state marshal, you know. Yeah, I know. Just sit tight. All will be revealed. Now you gonna tell me what the hell is going on? Cutting Grant free, we stow him on the back of our horse and take him to Calloway. I was, before you got so short with me. Son, what the hell are you up to? I'm taking you to see an old friend of yours. It's a reunion, sort of. Will you stop being so damn cryptic? I'm telling you all I can. It's a job. Someone wants to see you. I'm taking you to him. What if I don't want to see them? Well, that's a good argument for keeping that rope around your wrists. I'm a state marshal, and this is an abduction. Horseshit! I'm saving you. This is just a little detour on the way to liberty. This is it. Down here, it's almost over, Marshal Grant. State Marshal Grant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
you got him. I think so. Did you kill his cousin back in 82? <laughs> Whose cousin? My cousin. I never shot no one didn't deserve it. Uh, you shot Jed Calloway. And I told you then I'd shoot you too. And I would have if you'd shown up. I was there. No, you weren't. You left town. You take that back. But I don't care now. It's nigh on 20 years ago. We're old men. We're lucky. Fight me. You're an old man. Come on, fight me. It's a bit late, isn't it? God damn you! Well, that settles that then. I shot him back. I shot him in the goddamn back. And these things happen. God damn you, goddamn both of you! Well, now calm down. Who cares? You should have shot him 20 years ago. He's dead now. You are a sickness scum like you and you, Plato. Come on, draw! Why? I said draw, goddammit! No. Yes! Shit! Shit, indeed. Still, at least now you got a, an end into your book. He's dead. Oh, don't you start now. No, I'm not starting. I'm... I'm happy. I'm free. I can finally go back to writing westerns instead of being in one. Hey, he was pretty wild. And I know some wild people. He was certainly complicated. I'm sorry I shot him. No, and you didn't shoot him. He did. In the back. After he mortally wounded Slim Grant. Fair and square. Yes, that's it. Last of the gunslingers. Well, more or less, I guess. There's more? Oh, well, there's always folk who shoot you in the back and, and rewrite history. Oh, <laughs> well, hey, where do I send the money? Send it to Tacitus Kilgore. No, that ain't my real name. After Arthur makes quick work of Calloway, Theodore decides to rewrite history and writes in the book that Slim Grant shot Jim Calloway in the back after Calloway mortally wounded Grant. Arthur agrees with the rewrite and tells Theodore that the money from the book sales is to be sent to Tacitus Kilgore and with that completes the quest, the noblest of men and a woman. Make sure before you leave Calloway's body you pick up Calloway's revolver, a unique variant of the Schofield revolver. This has a one-of-a-kind engraving that reads Canis Canem Edit, a reference to another Rockstar title, Bully. Before we end the video, it is important to know that the only way to obtain these weapons is by doing the quest, and if you forget to pick one up, then it's gone forever. This is everything we know about the legendary gunslingers on the noblest of men and a woman side quest in Red Dead Redemption 2. Thank you for watching.